Сегодня мы привезли очень ценного специалиста из Австралии. За его плечами 50-летний опыт. В частности, он более 10 лет возглавлял компанию, которая производит буровые инструменты по сей день. Также он является огромным профессионалом в области компрессорного оборудования. И всем этим он приехал с нами поделиться прямо из Австралии в эту не австралийскую погоду. Drilling. RC drilling started really in 1989 and it was the first time we got RC hammers. Before that we used crossover subs and it was very troublesome and difficult and a lot of getting stuck. So the RC hammers as you are using here made all the difference in 1989. So in 1989 RC drilling really started to become effective and it provides an excellent sample for low-grade ore bodies because when you have the ore spread out in the ground if you diamond drill you only get one piece of core and you cut it in half so you get a small sample but with RC drilling you drill a hole like this and then the entire sample gets crushed by the hammer put through the splitter so it's more accurate for low-grade ore bodies and this is important traditionally in some markets in Europe and in South Africa, they are not thinking about RC because they've always had core. The two technologies work side by side. Core lets you see the ground and RC gives you accurate samples and you can put the holes close together because it's lower cost and much faster. If you wanted to drill a program with core, like you could drill here, you, you would need multiple rigs and it would take a long time. So although RC is but more cost per metre sometimes, the speed makes up for the difference. But yeah, so back to where I was with the RC, we started with 350 or 25 bar compressors, 2.5 megapascal compressors, and we drilled maybe 150 metres, which is what we're doing here. And once we go deeper, the back pressures and the water causes problems and so boosters became a thing in 1992 to 1995, boosters became commonly used. And they enable you to drill quite deep, quite fast. And if you have a car, there's a thing called a cruise control, it's constant speed. So when you change to a booster, it's very easy for the driller to damage the hammer because he can put too much power when he's near the surface. So he has to think like a car driver. He uses the cruise control to drill and he can drill at a constant rate for a long time. And so he improves his productivity and if he's a good driller, he doesn't damage the hammer. So boosters made a big difference. And so we started to drill with boosters and it was good. And then of course, we started to have accidents because we're using high pressure air and lack of experience. So we had to secure the ends of the hoses. We had to make sure we treated the air carefully. And that was very important. And of course we had no, all using spanners. And so we had many hand injuries. And so the next stage of RC drilling was when the boosters came, we changed to move towards hands-free drilling. And by hands-free drilling, we had a big reduction in injuries to drillers. And this rig, pretty much is hands-free. It's still got one breakout tong, but that's the next generation for the Kazakh drilling scene. You'll have the power breakouts and the automated systems. And with that, the drill offsider will never touch the drill pipe. And also with these systems, the hammer can be broken out using that. So it's much easier to change a drill bit than is at present and you don't damage the hammer because it grips the hammer several places. So that's the 
process and now we've gone along further and there's idea of trying to make rigs automatic. And this has been difficult because unfortunately the mining companies haven't wanted to spend money so we have a lot of drilling companies doing different things and this is causing a lot of waste of money because only one will be successful probably. So I think Kazakhstan is in a good position to look at the Australian industry and wait until it sorts out which process works best. Like the rod, rod handler. That rod handler is based on the KWL, but in Australia <clears throat> there were four or five different kinds of rod handlers which were developed and used over a five year period and this one became the dominant one because it is the most versatile and flexible. And so Kazakhstan is avoiding by looking at what's happening in Australia, wasting time and money on ideas that aren't going to work as well. So, but the fully automatic rigs, if you come to Australia, you will see some different types, but they're not yet successful. A lot of trouble with electronics, and they are not really automatic because there's still a man, although he never touches the pipe, there's still a man there operating it. The exception is underground diamond drilling. Underground diamond drilling, they start the hole, everybody goes away and they come back three hours later, the machine has drilled the hole and pulled out. That's automatic. But it's not on the surface yet, not for deep holes. Some of the grade control shallow holes, they can be drilled automatically. But automatic drilling on RC for exploration, I think is five years away in Australia and there will be a lot of mistakes and a lot of money wasted before it becomes sorted out. So I think if you are careful and just watch the mistakes and you avoid the mistakes and you will be able to use this technology when it gets sorted out. As we, as we traveled with you in Australia, I saw one driller and one offsider on one rig and nobody else. Normally there is two offsiders but one is doing other things and he's not at the rig. So he can be getting fuel, transporting samples and moving equipment to the next hole because the way the Australian drill works, it has different equipment for different holes. So they will come to the hole, put the collar in if they can on the afternoon. And then they will drill out the bottom, maybe 50 meters and stop that day. And then they will come in the next day and they will try and finish a 300 meter hole in one day. Because when you drill an RC hole, it is much better to finish the hole and pull out and go away because the drilling disturbs the ground. So if you drill say 150, 200 meters and then leave the hole and come back the next morning, you've got a much bigger chance of having trouble. So there's this planning and so the, dr the driller, the third person is there and he's working to move parts of the equipment. Once it's been used to collar the hole, he moves to the next place. And he's also there because it's very hot and if they're required to work, they take breaks from the heat, get in the air-conditioned car because it becomes too hot. I think I get in the air-conditioned car to warm up here. <laughs> but yeah, so it's about like two and a half men per rig and so if there are several rigs working in one area you might have two men on each rig and then one or two other people in the area and if there are two or three rigs in the area there is often a mechanic and one person in that area so the mechanic is there to look after the rigs the drillers also if they have to do service work on the rig that extra person is helpful to reduce the time stop drilling. So, yeah, I think you will move towards less people, but in this climate, I think maybe probably three people on a rig for a, it'll be a process to reduce the number of people as they become accustomed to change. People become settled in their ways and it takes a little while to make a difference. So I think yeah, you could drill here in this temperature probably with three people quite easily. Well, not easily, not easily, 
but you could drill with three people and then beyond three, if you want to reduce below that, then you would need some other person for when you're moving and to help with that sort of thing available. So where do we go? You wanted okay. to share with me about the rod handler? Yeah. I am surprised that the rod handler works so well in the cold weather. The split design is very effective in gripping the pipe even when it's slippery with ice and it's not something we have in Australia and also the roller which feeds the pipe is very good because it means the man doesn't touch the pipe at all this is very important particularly when it's as cold as it is today so I think it's an interesting thing on this rig the uh, fact that it even drills in these temperatures compared to Australia we got plus 50 <laughs> It's a good advertisement to this rig. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's a good design. It's taken off the uh, KWL, but it's a better design because it grips the pipe positively. The KWL, the pipe is loose in the pocket in the bottom, and so that causes damage to the pipe, but it's also dangerous. This is positively gripped in two halves, so it's a much better design. What is KWL? <coughs> KWL is the original people who made this style of rod handler, but they used a round pocket and the pipe fit in, but the pipe was always a bit loose and could wobble. And so it wasn't so good to line up with the head and it caused more pipe damage. This design is better from holding and also from aligning the pipe. And so it ends up making the pipe last longer cost the client less money and cost the driller less money. So it's a good design. Thank you. I think there's more things on the rig, but I'll find them over the course of the next day. I don't know whether you want me to talk about lubricating oil, because some people, you, you, some people use uh, environmental oil, but the problem with this product is that it's not so good for the hammers. So actually using old oil which has been just put through a filter actually makes the hammers last longer and perform better and they don't freeze up either because the environmental oil has got it's uh, more prone to freezing than the true mineral oil so as strange as it might sound using old engine oil and hydraulic oil is better for the hammer in these conditions and what oil do the leading company use well, the leading companies in Australia are using a biodegradable oil, but this oil does not work very well in many circumstances, and it's extremely expensive. And there's a lot of advertising to say, oh, you must use this oil. But the, with that oil comes short hammer life and other problems. So using, reusing and recycling old engine oil is in fact better and it makes the tools last longer. And also, when you finish drilling, if you're using the environmental oil, the pipe will start to rust straight away. It doesn't protect the pipe against rust, but your pipe inside, I look carefully, and there's no rust. And that's because it's coated with mineral oil. The only problem with mineral oil can sometimes be in gold mining, because the, gold, the oil affects the assay process for the gold. So a gold mining customer might say, I want to insist on using this other oil, but it slows progress and it causes more wear when you do. So you should charge them more. Okay, <laughs> will do. Can you please highlight or say some major differences between Australian drillers and local drillers from Kazakhstan? 
differences between the drillers. Yeah, major driller. Yeah. What have you noticed? I've noticed the Kazakh drillers are tougher. <laughs> <laughs> the Kazakh drillers are using experience and feel, which is what happened in Australia when we started RC drilling down to maybe 150 metres. Once you go deeper with RC, then it's more difficult to hear the machine and it will become important for you to put some small extra instruments on the rig because that will help the driller. Because as they go deeper, the sounds from the rig and the hammer are less and so it's easier to get stuck. So this will be a progress, like in Australia, as the holes go deeper, then the rigs have to be slightly different. The same as as you go deeper, you probably have to go from four inch to four and a half inch drill pipe. And normally four inch drill pipe is limited to 150, 200 meters. And then from 200 meters to 600 meters, four and a half inch drill pipe is perfectly good. And if you use a big pipe in shallow holes and there's water, you actually have more trouble. So it's good if you're using, if you're drilling shallow holes to use a slightly smaller pipe because it helps to keep the water out. And when you are going deeper, you will be using, of course, two compressors and a booster, and you can use the larger pipe successfully and keep the water out. But yeah, the Kazakh drillers, they do very well in the very difficult conditions. Although I think in the hot, they might have a problem, but uh, I'll see more in the next several days. <laughs>